Hi, I'm Erin Entrada Kelly, the author of We Dream of Space. All of us remember middle school. Those of us who are going into middle school or in middle school now, um, you know, even if you don't want to admit it, that there are times when you feel like you don't know what you're doing, when you feel like you're not living up to people's expectations or even the expectations you have of yourself. And even the most popular kid in school, the best athlete, the prettiest cheerleader, um, everyone is a misfit in some way. And for some of us, it affected us more than others. But all of us know what that's like, especially in middle school when people are trying to figure out how to fit in, but also stand out, how to be themselves, but also be like everyone else. It's a world of contradictions. And ultimately, we're all just trying to find our way. One of the things that's important for me as a writer is to write books that depict the world as it is, not as we wish it to be. And in a perfect world, all young people would have supportive, encouraging adults in their lives who support them and provide the emotional comfort that we all need when we're growing up in this mad, mad world. But unfortunately, the world isn't perfect. So I want to write stories that show how people have and can navigate an imperfect world. And for young people, a lot of that imperfection rests on the shoulders of adults in their lives. There are a lot of young people who do not have supportive, comforting parents. There are some young people who don't have parents at all. And those young people deserve to see themselves in stories and they deserve to have all the tools they need to navigate the world just like any other young person out there. And books are one way um, that we can do that. That's one way we can gift it to them, is to show them, look, here's other young people who are in your situation, but they survived, and you can too. I think about what it means to be strong a lot, because when I was a little girl, I did not think it was a strong person at all. I was very sensitive and empathetic and my feelings were hurt easily and empathy very much felt like a flaw and not a strength. I know now that empathy is one of the greatest strengths a person can have because compassion is what ultimately changes the world, not brute strength. So for me, what it means to be strong is knowing what you believe in, sticking to those beliefs, um, rising above yourself. For a greater purpose when necessary and love and kindness for others and a willingness to understand the world of other people that's an incredible strength i can't think of anything stronger than that those are both important questions because guess what we start asking ourselves that question from a very young age, and many of us continue to ask that question well into adulthood. So it's important to seek answers any way we can with as many avenues as possible. I was bullied as a young person, and, and many people are, and many young people are currently being bullied or harassed. Um, it's important for me to explore that because it is, uh, whenever you're being bullied, I know for me, you kind of develop the sixth sense, you know, and that sense of fear and apprehension really permeates your everyday life, and it could start to color the way you feel about yourself and the way you interact with the world around you. So it's important to explore what that means for young people and try to give them examples of how they can navigate those feelings and that situation. Um, you know, very often bullies fly under the radar. You know, they're not always caught or seen or they don't always get their just desserts, so to speak. 
So not only is it important to know how to navigate a world in which bullies exist, it's also important to know uh, how to resist the temptation that we all have to use people's negative behaviors and attitudes to inform our opinions of ourselves. I was a child of the 1980s, so I've kind of reached an age where the 80s are very nostalgic for me. And I felt like it was really important to write about the Challenger because those of us who grew up in the 80s remember that day very, very vividly. And I feel like it's been forgotten somewhat. When I speak to children at schools today, a lot of them have never heard of the Space Shuttle Challenger. So I wanted to honor the crew. I wanted to honor the 80s and my memories from childhood. And I wanted to honor aspiring astronauts in the space program and all the wonderful things that go into it. This, you could not escape the space program in the 1980s. It was um, in the news constantly, at least that's how I remember it. And it was a very exciting time thinking about exploration and what's out there. And I think even without the excitement around the space program, people, especially young people, you know, you're still full of wonder. So as a young girl, I would look up at the sky and the stars and wonder what was out there. Was there life out there? Were there other people out there? Were there people looking at Earth from whatever planet they were on? And I think that um, a lot of young people have that wonder, even without the excitement around the space program, but the sp space program just kind of amplifies all that excitement. One reason why it's really important to show imperfect family and imperfect characters is because all of us are imperfect. All of us have flaws, all of us have fears, all of us have insecurities. All of us make bad decisions sometimes or think ugly thoughts. It's just the way of life. And it's important to show that imperfection on the page so that when people are reading the book, they can feel understood. They can feel like they understand the characters and the characters understand them. It's also really important to have imperfect family dynamics because families come in all different shapes and sizes and moods and tones. And there are people out there right now who are growing up in a household that is toxic and somewhat dysfunctional as the Nelson Thomas family is. There are adults who remember what it was like to grow up in that family dynamic. And it's important for readers when they open a book to see their family, whether it's the cultural landscape of their family, the religious landscape of their family, or the dynamics for better or worse of their family. Whenever we see that in books, it helps us navigate our own world and understand the world of others. Bird wants to be an astronaut in a time when female representation in the space program was marginal. Um, it's better now, but back then especially, it was uncommon, so her hero her heroine, Judith Resnick, is only the second woman to go into space. And what I would say to young people, if you have a dream and someone is telling you you can't accomplish that dream, I would say use that doubt, use that uh, discouragement to your advantage. Let it feed your motivation, let it um, energize you, and yes, there are some times when you have to try harder, sometimes twice as hard, three times as hard, four times as hard, to get something that other people have handed to them. But at the end of the day, it is your perseverance, your determination, and your belief in yourself uh, is what truly changes not only your life, but the life of others that come after you, and ultimately the world. <music>